Hello and welcome to the matchup presented by Unibet alongside Dale Lawley and Matt Williamson of SNR's The Drive. I'm Rob King coming to you as we get you ready for the 3-1 and one Baltimore Ravens visiting the 2-2 two and two Steelers who things look very promising for after consecutive victories but then they were flattened by the Houston Texans in a surprisingly lopsided loss and that has brought a lot a lot of angst among Steelers fans. However, as we look forward to the Ravens game, the good news is, guys, you're going in against an arch rival with the opportunity to win, go into the bye week in first place, amazingly, in the AFC North. Yeah, and you know, Rob, it's, it's a situation where, yeah, you would have loved to have won last week's game for sure, uh, but everything is still there. Nobody's running away with the division right now, and that's, the, that's been the key. If the Steelers can get this win on Sunday, they're right back where they were going into last week's game. You get a bye week, maybe you get Cam Hayward back. You probably definitely get Deontay Johnson back. Uh, some of the other guys are nicked up right now. So you have to find a way to uh, compete and win this game. If you do that, you're in good shape. And it's a great rivalry, Matt. And as we can you know, look at here as you're perusing this on your screen, it almost always seems to be a really close game when these two teams meet. Yeah, it sure does. I mean, similar philosophies, really strong organizations, stable head coaches. So it's probably the best rivalry in the NFL over the last 20 years or so. I mean, and it, if it's going to be a hard-fought battle, I think that plays the Steelers' favor. You know, I mean, try to keep this thing close and see how it goes. All right, let's look at the key matchups. And I'm going to begin by talking about the guy I think that we're all going to be talking about in some mm-hmm way, shape, or form, and that's Lamar Jackson. The Steelers need to find a way to contain him if they can, but I'm talking about the entire Steelers defense. When you look at you know, him, he's only started three games against the Steelers. That's hard to believe. He's yeah. been in a Ravens uniform for you know 10 occasions in which these two teams have met, but he's only made three starts. One and two against the Steelers, his lowest ever quarterback rating, but he does have a new offensive coordinator, and that's Todd Munkin who's trying to get him to get the ball out of his hands more quickly. He's the most accurate he's ever been in his career. His quarterback rating is the second highest it's been, uh, only behind his MVP season. He's running a little bit less. So this is a little bit different usage of Lamar Jackson, Matt, than we're used to seeing. Yeah, and there's been noticeable changes with their offense, but maybe not as wholesale as people think. I mean, they were unbelievably low in their usage of 11 personnel with three receivers on the field compared to the rest of the league under the previous regime. Now they're still near the bottom of the league, but it's not so far off. You know, Patrick Ricard's not playing quite as much. Their big blocking tight ends aren't playing quite as much. They still throw to the middle of the field a high percentage of the time. That's what Lamar likes to do. His, you mentioned his completion percentage is through the roof right now. It's only behind Josh Allen, but they're not pushing the ball downfield a lot. There are a lot of quick, easy throws you know, stuff to the flats, over the middle. It's been very efficient, and he's been great. Fewer design runs, but as you can see, that doesn't mean they're not having design sure. runs. They certainly are. So I'm running a couple last week on design quarterback draws, but not as much as the option, that sort of running from Lamar as we've seen in the Yeah, past. you won't see as many RPOs in this game as they've run in the past. They still do some of that, uh, but it's not, not to the level that they did before. And, you know, when they do throw outside the numbers to, to kind of take you to, to my key matchup here, um, it, it, a lot of it's, you know, bubble screens and things of that nature on the edge uh, to Zay Flowers, their rookie wide receiver. And you better be able to tackle the catch in this game. You better be able to, to have your corners tackle because they're going to run Justice Hill to the edges as well. And, of course, when Lamar gets out there, you've got to get him on the ground. But if you look at Flowers' production this year, uh, thus far he's averaging 6.1 yards per depth of target. That's the lowest for any wide receiver who is his team's leading receiver uh, in the NFL this, se- this season. It's, it's much closer to what you see typically for a tight end, uh, you know, th- that kind of usage. So you got to get him on the ground. you got to tackle him after the catch. You can't let him turn a six-yard pass into a 20-yard game. Well, I think that underscores a little bit of what's been the Steelers' problem. The Steelers are the 30th-ranked rush defense in the league, averaging over 148 yards allowed. But then you look at Brandon Ayuk, 129 yards, two touchdowns. Amari Cooper went for 90. Devontae Adams, 172-2. and two. Uh, Nico Collins, 168 yards and two touchdowns. So it's not only not stopping the run, Matt, it's also – the inability to stop the other team's top receiver. And in this case, maybe Zay Flowers is used a little bit differently, but you can't allow them to run the ball and also have a 100-plus yard receiver. No question. And what's sort of interesting about it is a lot of the running production has come after contact, where in the passing game, they're not allowing a lot of yards after the catch. 
So in this instance, as Dale's mentioned, you know, if you're going to do quick hitters to Zay Flowers, come up and tackle the catch, you could be pretty decent off. But however, what worries me is especially Lamar getting to the edges. You know, that, that's really my key is, you know, Houston did a great job of getting Damian Pierce, their running back, who's a different type of ball carrier than Lamar, matched up on the Steelers' corners, getting to the, getting to the outside. And Lamar is just flat out more dangerous. You know, he's not as physical as Pierce, but he's just more dangerous. I'm well, sure they're going to try to attack the perimeter. He's going to get that edge sure. a lot quicker than Pierce could get to no, the Without edge. a doubt, yeah. yeah. And, and he's, a, he's like a, a, a Maserati out there. And just the acceleration is, is, is what makes him different from most running backs. Uh, you know, I, I really think, you know, one of the re reasons why Lamar is so successful, particularly against NFC teams and things of that nature, if you don't play against him a lot, you're not used to seeing that kind of speed out of the quarterback position. And well, I mean, the Steelers do have some new pieces on that defense, particularly at the second level with those linebackers. I'm sure those guys have all faced him, but it, you know, the Steelers have done a good job of defending Lamar over, over the, the course of his career thus far. I think he averages 4.3 yards per carry against them. But with so many new guys, uh, you know, is he going to catch some of these guys by surprise? That's going to be the key to me in this game. Can you keep him under control? Well, you hope that familiarity will help out again. Mm -hmm. He's just one and two against the Steelers. Low quarterback rating, low rushing yards ratings. Hopefully another week here. Maybe the Steelers can find themselves in first place in the AFC North with the victory over the Ravens. Yin's Chat's regular season challenge is back. Each week, answer Steelers trivia and make game day picks for a chance to win signed helmets, jerseys, footballs, or even a trip to the 2024 draft. New this season, doubling, answer the day's questions correctly and get double the points. Log into the Steelers mobile app now and play for a chance at this week's prize, a football signed by Alex Highsmith. Total points over under 15 and a half against Baltimore. We're going to get to the offense in a little bit, but I got to go over on this one. I mean, 15 and a half is incredibly low. Um, I would go over. Uh, I think the, the Ravens defense is playing well, but I'll take the over. I'm taking the under just to be different. But uh, I mean, I, I think <laughs> I it's did that and it a... cost me a couple <laughs> weeks ago. I do think it's going to be a slugfest. We could have a little bit of weather potentially. There's injuries on both sides of the ball, too. I mean, Baltimore's dealt with a lot of injuries. And, you know, the Steelers, we know they're some of the guys they're going to be missing. This might be a race to 14. Right. As yeah. you say, 13 points could win this game. It may right? be. Yeah, the, the under might still wind up being a, a victory for mm -hmm. the Steelers, hopefully against the Baltimore Ravens. Up next, to look at some of the keys for the Steelers to try to move the ball here effectively against the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, we'll look at those key matchups when we continue on the matchup presented by Unibet. Want to get gear direct from the team? Shop all things black and gold at the official Steelers Pro Shop located at Acrosure Stadium. Get the latest sideline apparel and hats, jerseys of your favorite players, authentic memorabilia, custom gear, and exclusives you can only find here. Don't forget, you aren't game day ready without a terrible towel. The Steelers Pro Shop has everything you need to be part of the legendary Steelers Nation. Come experience the Acrosure Stadium shopping environment or shop online at shop.steelers.com. And welcome back to the matchup presented by Unibet alongside Matt Williamson, Dale Lally, SNR is the drive. Hope you listen to him. I'm Rob King. Thanks very much again for being with us. We're going to take a look now at the other matchups, the other side of the ball, as it is the Steelers defense or Steelers offense against the Ravens defense. And for me, you know, look, we've talked about how Najee needs to be productive and they need to be able to move the ball and, and they need to be able to control the clock. And that's how they went seven and two down the stretch last season by playing that brand of football. But I'm going to go completely opposite. I want to see the Steelers be extremely aggressive. Start fast, be aggressive, attack this very good run defense with the idea that you're going to get them on their heels. And instead of thinking, let's go out and grind the clock down, uh, let's try to control the ball, I think the Steelers need to start fast and be aggressive. We saw it in the preseason, obviously. They tried to do it against San Francisco. It didn't work. But I think that's the best way to attack this team, specifically – with play action, because in that Tampa 2 defense, you'll see those linebackers, Roquan Smith, and uh, you know who, who in particular has that great speed, and Patrick Queen, they can drop back in coverage. Little play action, maybe freeze those guys. But regardless of how you do it, I want to see the Steelers, Dale, come out and attack. 
not run the ball, attack through the air. Yeah, and you, you got to stay out of third and long situations. So I think if you do that, um, you know, it does help you move the chains a little bit and, and you know, kind of force them out of the attacking the line of scrimmage so much uh, on early downs on, on what would be considered rundowns. Um, you know, maybe you change things up a little bit, throw, throw them a little bit of a curveball here. Run when you when you when they think you're going to throw, and throw when you, they think you're going to run. So um, I'm with you. I, I think this. You know, when I look at the injuries that have taken uh, that have affected this Baltimore team, a lot of them are in that secondary, and their secondary really hasn't been tested a whole lot in the first few games based on some of the quarterbacks they faced. Well, part of the reason I'm saying that, Matt, which gets to your key, is because the Ravens are very stingy against the run. They're very difficult to run against. Ideally. I think you'd love to run Najee Harris and Jalen Warren, and I think that's where you're going. Yeah, and Najee was one of the few bright spots from last week. I thought he had a tremendous game, and it went for naught, of course. But a huge key to the really the last two seasons for the Ravens was their acquisition of Roquan Smith. And I don't want to say he's Ray Lewis, but I feel like the Steelers faced the best linebacker in the league in week one, Fred Warner. And this guy's number two. And if you look at their numbers since the trade, the defense is at the top of the league where they were struggling before that. He's the new face of the defense. Everybody's looking for these linebackers that never have to leave the field. Well, he never leaves the field, and he has great, great impact in all phases. Seems like he's elevated the play of Patrick Queen, yes. who they were hoping was going to be that kind of guy when they drafted him. Absolutely. And Queen's former first-round pick, immense skills, fast, all those type of things. So Roquan's the Batman, and he's Robin, and it makes his life a little easier, too. Meanwhile, you know, we talk a lot about Todd Munkin, right? He comes in offensively. He's going to do things differently for the Ravens. Well, they had a new offensive coordinator as well, Mike McDonald, um, who also does things a little bit differently. And your key is Kenny Pickett understanding what Mike McDonald wants to do here defensively to attack the Steelers' offense. Yeah, if you look at what the Ravens are doing this year, they used to be a very heavy blitz team. Now they're down to about 20% of the time, but if you look at where their sacks are coming from, they're still coming across the board. I mean, their leader is, is safety Kyle Hamilton, which you'd think, oh, if, they, if the safety is you know, one of their leading uh, sack guys, they must blitz a lot. They're not blitzing a lot, but they show it. And they'll, 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 they'll have you know, seven, eight guys at the line of scrimmage, and then at the snap of the ball, four of those guys are dropping out. Which four, uh, you know, that's, the, that's what the quarterback and the offensive line have to figure out at the snap of the ball. So. Knowing that, figuring it out pre-snap if you can, or if you have to figure it out post-snap, doing it very quickly, processing it quickly, that's going to be key for Kenny Pickett this week. Hamilton has three sacks. Their safeties have four. They're 15 sacks. So as Dale mentioned, it just comes from all over the field. It can come up the middle from, yep. from the linebackers you just mentioned. can come from the edge or the safeties. A very, very confusing. Confusion seems to be a big part of what he's trying to do. Yeah, the skies. Simulated pressures are a real staple of this group. As Dale mentioned, it's not a lot of heavy blitz. They don't like to leave their corners on islands like they did under the, the former regime. And it's unlike the Steelers' previous opponents, there's not a Crosby, there's not a Bosa, there's not a Garrett, but they get a lot of quality. And if you look at their defensive front last week, they all played somewhere between 30 and 58% of the snaps. They, they like to keep people fresh because they don't have a true star up front. Well, and this is going to be an interesting matchup. And, you know, going back to what we talked about at the beginning, you win this game as bad as the optics were in Houston. It's still just one loss in the loss column. If you can somehow find a way to win this game, you head into the bye, Dale, in first place in the AFC North. <laughs> and 3-2. and 2-0 two and, two and in the division. Again, getting guys back. 2-0 and o in the division would be huge. Conversely, if Baltimore wins this game, they'll be 3-0 yeah. and o in the division with all three being on the road. Um, you know, so everybody else, every, you know, the, the other AFC North teams are all going to still have to go to Baltimore, which is never an easy task. So this is a pivotal game. Without question. That's what I was about to say, too, is the other side of the coin is if the Ravens do get this win, they, you know, they, they found a way to get to that point. All those road wins on the division overcame a lot of injuries throughout the season. This is a game the Steelers have to hit. Yep, it's a big they one, really obviously, do. for the Steelers with first place in the AFC North on the line as the 3-1 and one Baltimore Ravens visit the 2-2 two and two Pittsburgh Steelers at Akershire Stadium. Kickoff is scheduled for 1 p.m. on Sunday. For Dale Lawley and Matt Williamson, I'm Rob King. Thanks for watching the matchup presented by Unibet.